So it's an exciting vlog today. Finally, after all these years, I'm going to interview my wife, who is Thai. I often don't like to use the word Thai wife. I think it has negative connotations. But for the sake of this vlog, I think that's kind of the audience that are going to be looking to see an interview like this. So I do use it. And she is my wife and she is Thai. So um, this interview, I just want to put a disclaimer. This is not the opinions of all Thai women or all Thai people. It's not the opinions of all expats. This is just me asking my wife some questions that I know many people are interested in have asked me over the years that they wanted to ask her. And it's part of a wider series here on The Naked Guru where I'm going to be interviewing different expats, different people about living in Thailand, becoming an expat in Thailand, moving to Thailand. So let's get on with it. We're going to be asking my wife all kinds of different questions now. And it's going to give you insight to who she is and her thoughts on Thai people living here, Thai culture and having a crazy expat husband. All right, babe, so you have agreed to have a little interview with me, and I know you're quite nervous because this isn't your thing usually. So, but you agreed to answer some questions. Some of these questions just come from years of being on YouTube in Thailand, and people have asked in the comments. So the first question, nice and easy one, they're gonna get more difficult as we go along, but it's, uh, what was it like growing up on the farm as a kid here? Um, growing up on the farm is what fun that I remember and also it's like a, you know it's uh, you have the best experience in childhood like you play in the dirt and you uh, respond you have responsibility to uh, take care of things like animals helping parents to clean the house uh, clean dish and everything you know and uh, and also it's like a, it's a fun thing for me. I think it's uh, for me. I still thinking the my childhood is better than you know like like new generation because the new generation they only focus on um, phone. Yeah, they have uh, more technology, but uh, they miss some fu uh, fun parts of life. Uh, in the farm, on the farm, like that. So some people, when they see the farm though, and they see your mum's house, look like it very old, falling to bits. Mm. Some people might think it's a very poor way to grow up. Like it looked poor on the outside, but um, actually, I've lived here a long time with you too. It's not, is it? No, how, how, what do you think about uh, that? When we was young, uh, we was poor. Yeah, we, we like... Uh, my parents is a farmer and we growing up here is poor and uh you know it was poor and you know it, we're struggling with food sometimes and also it's really difficult life when we was young but also it's fun you know and uh you when you grow up you uh, learn everything by yourself that is uh the strong what you call like uh Independence. Yeah, it, it, it's like that. You know how to. Uh, you take don't. Care yeah, take care of yourself. You don't depends on uh, someone to look after you like that. You know, it's like uh, you have very strong. You know, <laughs> growing up on a farm is like make you like stronger, and uh, you know how to live your life. You know, to help yourself. Was there ever a time where you didn't have any food? Or any money? Um, no, I, I don't remember that we struggling with that. Yeah, but because when we was young, we we work to get the money to like uh, 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 it's like a uh, sell some stuff like uh -huh. vegetable or something helping. And also when I was young, my mom also uh, sell some noodles. Yeah, and uh. I don't, I don't remember like uh, it's, it's struggling, but uh, with food or everything. But my mom just told me when we was a baby, she said that she get very difficult life because when she has twin babies like me and my sister, she said that time is like uh, uh, it's difficult for her and uh, when like breast milk, another one hang, uh, hungry, yeah, uh -huh. and also like uh, uh, nobody helping, you know, they have to take care, and also my sister is only one year old that time, and me and my 
uh, me and my twin sister is like a still baby, you know. So she have to care. Uh, she have to carry and then look after three babies at the same time. Yeah. And do you think that we've got kids here on the farm now? Many kids that are not ours. But do you think that the kids they have good opportunity for the future for work and things like? Do they have good occupation for the future? I I think of course it's like. Uh, Depends on the kids if they like to be, you know, uh, uh, what you call some kids they don't want to study because you know they don't want to go to university they don't want to think uh, about they don't want to learn they don't want to go to school they not enjoy going to school like that but uh, every kid in the farm they have opportunity to work and to have a good life in the future. Yeah, it depends on them, you know, and also depends on the family as well. If the family support and help them, and uh, you know, share them up to yeah, just go like that. That I think the family is important. Like my family, we growing up poor. I can say that before when we was kid, when we were kid, but um, we growing up poor when we were kid, but my family their support like if I want to go to university uh, they, they just you know support in that way and also it's like uh, the kids here the, the, the farm kids here they have opportunity if the parents don't have money you know they uh -huh. can loan money from the uh, government uh -huh. yeah to study you know, good. And, and that's good evidence because you went to university and studied and your sister went to university and studied mm. and you ended up getting a very good job yes. in um, Bangkok. So what was your first job in Bangkok and how did you get it? My first job in Bangkok was I, I, I was working with uh, Export Import Bank of Thailand. Yeah, that's my first job. Your in degree Bangkok. was finance? Fa financial management. And how did you get the job? Hmm? the job you just apply and get it or did you have to work your way up or uh, what you call scholarship scholarship yeah scholarship to up uh. when you finish uh, the last term yeah. so you have to like a training job like work that. experience yeah, yeah and uh, I apply with them for three months uh. yeah and then after that they, they just want to get me in to the corporate so that's a you know it like continue with them uh, yeah. when I when I uh, graduate then they call me to go work for them and when you lived in Bangkok did you have an active social life only in the workplace <laughs> so <laughs> not did you outside. go party or no 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 not uh, active social life what you mean like that going out party you know go I've never been socialize with people uh, to be honest uh, I just been party when I met Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, in a university, no, never, never go to the nightclub. In Bangkok, never. Yes, I remember. Uh, never and yeah, like. Uh <laughs> and how old were you when we met? Wow. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. 27, 27, yeah. 27 yeah. So I, you're not a very social person, are you? You don't have many friends? Um, I can say that I'm a very introvert person. <laughs> but I like to go nature more than uh, go with friends, you know, or have social life. I only have a few friends in Bangkok when I uh, was working with Exim Bank. It, it was working with uh, Export Import Bank. So I only have a few friends to hang out with me and like uh, go have lunch sometime and uh, uh, shopping sometime. But most of the time when I was living in Bangkok, I always go out, you know, weekend. Yeah, I always go to uh, another province for travel, not, never, not, not stay in Bangkok on the weekend. Yeah. And so many people, especially if they've never been to Thailand and they look from the outside through YouTube and things, mm -hmm. they may think that many Thai girls are party girls and you know, like to socialize a lot um, 
and they're always in the nightclubs and, and bars. Mm. But but in Bangkok, there are many kind of working professional people. Yeah, that's very hard to meet them because because obviously some people thinking about becoming expats want to meet a partner. Mm. Maybe they want somebody to party with. That's fine. Or maybe they want a professional. But those professionals, they're hard to meet because they're working. Yeah, they're, hours, they're, yeah, they're working, and also like uh, some people that just want to relax life after work. I mean, Friday, some people that just go party, but that we we not just them because that is just like uh, their relaxing time or something yeah. like that. But uh, and also uh, some people party a lot. Yeah, I I don't know that, but most of the Thai. You know, Thai women, especially in Bangkok, they most of the time they're working. You know, they're, they're working, and some people that are like social party, and then they only have like weekend for relax. You know, maybe you can meet them in a shopping mall or something like that. <laughs> But I'm not sure that how many people they they meet up like that. You know, that way, and uh, I think most of people easy to meet in a nightclub or something like that. Well, we met online, didn't we? Yeah, 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 yes. So did, we met because we were going to go hiking in s a i n t a n a b e r i and yes. do a nature walk and things like that. Not mm. really for dating, mm. but then it become more. Yes. Um, you're a very shy person, yeah. Mm. And then here, did you ever think that you would marry a Farang? Never. <laughs> did you think you would marry Thai? Mm, I don't know. I don't. Never. Th- Uh, you, I mean, by that time, 27, and I'm not thinking about having a partner or something, or who gonna be my partner or something like that. You know, just think. I uh, feel like uh, when it's time to have family, then okay, it's time. Yeah, but also uh, when I want to have family, I just want to. I feel like I don't want to have boyfriend, and then you break up, and then you start new relationship. I don't want that. Uh, I I just want. Uh, In my dream, it's just one one person in my life, you know. So that's why I stick to him. <laughs> Funny, that's the next question. So when you were younger, what were your dreams for the future? Oh, wow. Because dreams. you was earning good money in Bangkok, so you could you bought a condo with your sister. You did some, you know, you you were saving money and things before I met you. What was your dreaming or planning for for the future? Uh. D- For for my dream, it's just like uh, you know, sick of Bangkok. Just want to work as much as I can, and then move out from Bangkok and stay in, on the farm, build a house, stay on the farm. That's all my dream. So this was your dream. <laughs> yeah, that was my dream. Do you think many Thai women have that dream? I think when I uh, get to my age, that time I was twenty seven. I don't think people that think, maybe some of them, but most of them. I think they enjoy in the city life, you know. They mm. they just want to do that. But when later year, I think they are feeling like uh, because uh, I have a friend in in my workplace, and uh, they they older already. So what they do is they just waiting for uh, retire retirement time, you know. So they save the money, they save money, and then. Uh, They're planning bought the land outside, you know, in countryside. So when they retire, they that that they plan to move out of Bangkok. Yeah, and for me, I dream to move out from Bangkok when I was very young already. So it's just like to be somewhere nature. Yeah, for me. But I I was thinking about Chiang Mai, but I don't think Chiang Mai is is not good because it's far away from my family. And uh, and it's like a big city now. It's a big city now. Big yeah, it's good that I'm not moving there. <laughs> yeah, and obviously not all Thai women like. Sometimes people like to put Thai. They say Thai wife. You know, like I use on this thumbnail. Mm-hmm. I don't like all Thai people. All Thai women are the same, mm-hmm. but they're not just like anywhere. Everybody's different. Some people like party. That's great. Maybe you want a party. Person as a as a yeah, wife, yeah, you know. Yes. There's no judgment here. We're just saying, like for expats, this is Damil's predicament, and some other ties are like that, and other ties are not. Not every tie is like party, and not every tie is like nature. And so I don't want to. We're not making any generalizations. What have you learned by being married to Farang? Uh, t- 
what I learned about this because in Thailand for Thai people they're very giant you know and also they're very talk like uh, not straight yeah but in what we call foreigner they talk straight you know you open my uh, put everything on the table and then you don't like this, I don't like that, you have to say that, you know, put everything on the table. But for me, it have for me, the first time it have for me to accept that because, you know, sometimes you don't want to hear anything. Sometimes Thai also don't like to lose face and things like that as well. So they, in, their, in Thai culture, they don't talk about certain things, like mm. they'll keep quiet instead of make the other one lose face or criticize or judge, they stay mm. quiet instead. But we used to, in the early relationship, we used to argue a lot more. Because I like to ignore. Ignore she likes it to means be quiet. quiet. Uh -huh. For me, I feel like uh, quiet is go. <laughs> and it's silent treatment. It's silent. I like to be silent. And then I think it's better with anything and not talk much. And uh, it's just like uh, when he talk, 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 I just, oh, come on, stop. <laughs> And then it's just like, uh, I just want to stay in my place, uh, what you call, give space a little space. bit. Yeah, but Ryan, he think that I ignore him. So the ignoring, he don't like it, you know. Yeah. And uh, so later years, later. This, the, the this, was, this was like five years ago, yeah. that kind of thing. Six years, we've been together 10 years. These days, we already learned how to be with each other for many years now. Mm. So we don't have this problem anymore. But if you're starting off a relationship, you have to understand yeah, there's different ways of being, right? Yeah, and I think it's like you have to understand what he, you know, this who he is. And he have to understand me to like uh, uh, who I am, you know, and then we compromise. And yeah. then if he want to talk and clear, okay, clear. <laughs> because I, sometimes I... I have something to say, but I don't know how to explain, you know, so I keep it in mind. And um, yeah, that is not good, I know that. I know. Well, it's not, not good, it's not good, it's just your way. That's yeah, it's my way, but way. also, like, you don't understand that. So I have to, uh, what you call, have to understand your feeling as uh -huh. well. So I have to open more. So later year, I start to talk more and then open more. Everything, what I'm thinking, what yeah, I don't never, like. Never be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think the difficult part of Farang relationship is and Farang Thai relationship? Like if, if somebody watching this is thinking about maybe one day I'll marry Thai or my, maybe I want to meet a Thai, what could be one problem with the difference between Farang and Thai? I think culture. The mm. main problem is the culture, you know, and uh, especially like uh, uh, Brian, he's he here in Thailand all the time. He understands some of the culture, but also some culture I have to explain to him, you know, and sometimes, um, you know, the culture is so different between uh, Western and Thai. It's so different. <laughs> so, yeah, like uh, talking, you know, like um, understand the way. Sometimes he don't understand, like uh, local people, sometimes they talk very loud, you know. But they, they like make joke and fun. First time Ryan, he don't understand that he think that they are fighting, but actually it's not fighting. <laughs> it's just the way they talk, like uh, the family. And some family, they don't hug, you know. Yeah, yeah the, it, you it's don't the, hug your family. No, or, yeah, hug or like my dad. Family. Yeah, it's, it's, we know that we love, you know, in the heart. We love, we take care of each other in the family, but we not like hugging, kissing, like uh, Western culture. Yeah, like you don't that. express the love the same way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in one culture, one part of Thai culture that I get asked about a lot on this channel is the sin soil. So we, which is the dowry, which is the money, for anybody that doesn't know, it's the money that the man would pay to the woman's family for marrying her. Now we didn't do that because we decided no. that it was just not, although it's Damo's culture, and her family's culture, it's not my culture, and our, we just decided we didn't want our love to be based on you know, financial exchange, and we decided to invest that money in our family and, mm. and what we're doing. But can you explain you know, what is a sin sod? Your sister's husband paid it to your 
family. It's my it? twin sister. And she married to Thai. Should they pay it? Should should people pay it? What what's your, your answer? Okay, to uh, to be honest, the uh, sinsod actually it should be this uh well it it's Thai traditional way, you know. Uh a man have to pay sinsod this big money to the woman family, you know. How uh, much? Depends what that the deal. You know, it's, it's so like between ten thousand dollars and thirty thousand dollars. Sometimes it's a lot more, depending if the foreign depends. Is very rich. Depends on. Or the Thai is very rich. Yeah. Because the Thais pay it too. Yeah. Uh, actually, since all it's showing that uh, you can take care of my daughter. You know, it's like a, and uh, if if for uh, foreigner what they see, the Western can say like uh, is. Is buying the daughter. Uh-huh. That what that what the uh, uh, that what uh, Western would think about that. But in Thailand, uh, this is like a traditional way. We don't want people to think like that. And uh, because it's not only do with Farang with in Thai, with Thai, you know, pay for Thai and get the get daughter. Got Thai to Thai also do the same. But it's just showing like uh, you can take care of my daughter. And this my daughter, I. Uh, I I raised her, you know, like a, raised her. yeah, raised her uh, the kid, and she go to university and blah blah blah, you know, and uh, I don't want her to go out, stay with any man that I don't know, maybe he not be able to look after my my daughter or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, so since all it's showing like uh, that family is wealthy enough to look after the daughter, yeah. And uh, it's like my sister, they both love each other. My twin sister, she married to Thai. They both love each other, but uh, they're working together to save this money. Mm. She she pays some of her own. Yeah, they 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 they're both working and save this money. Yeah, because it's a Thai tradition way, you know. So they have to do it, and also to um, respect the parents. Uh, my parents too, so they marry about two, three hundred k or something like that. Uh, so yeah. it's about, I think it's about seven or eight thousand dollars. We we decided that to build the house, to do other things, like to invest in the family. Mm. And your but, parents but, never but asked. No, never asked. Never but asked. my family, uh, my sister, my twin sister, she married. But all my my parents give all the money back to them to you know. It's like the gift, like they give this insult to my dad and my mom, and then my dad and my give back to them to like build their family. You know, like uh-huh. this is like a gift you give to me, and then I give it back for a gift to build your own family. Which is unusual because a lot of Thai families would not return. Yeah. Like uh, Damo's family never asked me for the insult mm. because they already saw that I could take care of Damo and the kids mm-hmm. and whatnot because we've done it for years. I had a successful career and. Um, and but it's unusual that they even when the sister paid that they her mom and dad gave that money back to them. Mm. Um, you probably wouldn't see that with a lot of Thai families, no. I'm not sure that I have some people do this or not, but my family do that, and then now uh, that is like a surprising, you know, like a surprise her as well. Like uh, she cry, <laughs> like uh, it should be like for my my mom, but my mom and my dad, but they all give. That because my mom think that they are going to have the family. This money is a big money, and they need it for to build their own family. You know. Now a common question I get from particularly in America, and it's quite some people won't believe it, but a lot of people ask me, "How much do you pay your wife? Like, how much salary do I pay the wife?" Why for? have to pay? <laughs> <laughs> Why have to pay? Yeah, it's and but even in in Thailand, I've seen some Thailand YouTubers cover mm. the idea that you would pay a certain amount of money to your wife each month. I think it's usually around ten to twenty thousand baht. But do Thais pay their wives like a monthly salary? And for me, I think uh, probably they pay that because they're working and also they give that money for the wife to take care of the house. Maybe the the wife not not do anything only like a housewife, and then she have to buy thing to fill up the fridge. But for our relationship, Ryan he 
the one that <laughs> manage everything. So it's like uh, he the one that shopping and <laughs> do everything. I'm the, I'm the house, the woman, <laughs> yes, yeah. the woman's uh, housewife. <laughs> but but so if we answer the question, how much do I pay you per month? None. <laughs> Nothing is the answer to that, that question. And we see it is that our finances, our money is family money. So mm -hmm. we manage our money. It's like this is, this is our family boat and we keep our boat floating with our family income. Um, if Damla ever needs something, she can get it. If I need something, I can get it. If he always asks me what I need. I say, no, nothing. <laughs> she never really needs much. Yeah. No, nothing. No, nothing. He but, asks me every week, every month, and I say no. But nothing. to tell the truth, when I do give you cash, uh, like if I say, oh, you know, just take five thousand. One day later, where's that money gone? No, buy everything for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as Damon gets any money from me or from her business. She works. At, she has her own business on Instagram. She sells these blazers. It makes quite good money. Nearly 100% of the money that she makes from the business goes to your mom, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Um, well, just buy food, buy snack for the kids. You know, I'm happy to do that. You're a very giving person. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's like, a, it's like for me, it's like most of the money that I have, I buy food <laughs> for, for them, you know. And sometimes like a, uh, some something for my mom, you know, more than like uh, for everything to be up the kitchen a little bit, you know, like uh, there's always something, <laughs> trust something. me. So, uh, it, and that's quite common, I think, for Thais. Thais have a culture of looking after the parents, yes, it's very like uh, it's not something that you feel like you forced to do is something like you're happy to do it mm. to look after your mom your parents you know and last question what's it like to be on youtube first a weird <laughs> first time is kind of weird and uh i'm very shy i don't want to be on the camera and i think i talk more <laughs> now you're much more confident on camera mm, yes <laughs> Well, thank you for answering all of these questions. I think this is a quite a personal insight to our life as well. Um, certainly personal about our relationship and how we started quite rocky, but 10 years later, we mm. built a very strong marriage as mother and father, as wife and mm. husband. And I think when we start to have kids, yeah, when we have kids, you know, we bring harmony to the family. Yeah. It's not only you and me, you know, like uh, we have me, we have more to think about, like the kids. And also you feel more love, you know, love to uh, your partner when you see him, love to your kids, you know, it's like a full of love in the family like that. And stop drinking. And stop drinking, that's the main <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm so about what nearly eight I years. I think if he's still drinking, probably we not. <laughs> no, no. no, I was a musician, I was out all night, I was playing saxophone on stage. So That time it was morning. difficult, I remember, because I'm not a drinker, I'm, I never drink, I'm uh. not a not social person, and because I love him, sometimes I feel like I fought to be the social person. person. <laughs> yes, and uh, I fought myself to be. So I feel like not not really happy that time. Uh, you know. That that's an interview for another day. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. So thank you, my love. Thank you. Bye bye, with the car. All right, everyone. So if you enjoyed this interview, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click the little bell, the notification bell. Thanks for the support in getting this channel up and running. I think you'd agree the content is somewhat different to our Life in Bamboo channel. Um, we want to be informative for expats. I'm going to be doing a lot more different interviews. This is just my wife as the first interview to get my bearings, but I'm also talking with a number of expats across Thailand who I'm going to interview about their experience of living in Thailand. We're going to be doing some Zoom calls and Skype calls, and hopefully it's going to be informative for you if you're thinking about becoming an expat in Thailand or you're just interested in these stories from people. And I also want to mention a project that I'm involved with. It's Fruiting Body Mushroom Supplements, and we've got an offer for you guys that are in Thailand Thailand now available on Lazada it's 25% off lion's mane mushroom so if you don't know the benefits of lion's mane definitely take some time to check out fruiting bodies website uh, link in description 
uh, or check online the research papers that are available on the many benefits of lion's mane mushroom available to you guys with a 25% discount. Don't forget to click collect. Um, thanks for your support of the channel and we hope you're all well.